Topic 10.1, Class Notes, Part 1, Gravitational Fields. Uh, we'll be breaking the Topic 10 notes into several parts, so this is just the first part today. A gravitational field will cause a mass placed in that field to experience a force. This equation is really the definition of gravitational field strength. It's the force per unit mass experienced by a mass placed in the field. The symbol is a lowercase g, you're familiar with that, and the units are newtons per kilogram. This is the same g that you're familiar with, and although the units are newtons per kilogram, please note that meters per second squared and newtons per kilogram are equivalent units. This equation allows us to predict the magnitude of the gravitational field caused by a mass m at a location that's a distance r away from the mass that's causing the field. It's important to know that the lowercase g, the gravitational field strength, uh, nothing has to be at that location. Uh, g is describing the properties of a location in space, whether or not there's an object there or not. If you do work to stretch a rubber band or to stretch a spring, you're storing energy in that spring in the form of elastic potential energy. Uh, by the same token, if we have two masses which are attracted to each other, and we do work to separate those two masses so that they are some distance apart r, then the work that we do to separate those two masses is stored uh, in the gravitational field between those two masses, and it's called gravitational potential energy. This equation allows us to calculate the gravitational potential energy stored by two masses a distance r apart. So big G here is of course Newton's gravitational constant that we've used before. Um, big M is the mass that's causing the gravitational field. It's usually something big like a planet, although it doesn't have to be. Small m is the, the other object, another mass. R is the distance that the two masses are apart. And then E sub P is the number of joules of gravitational potential energy that the two objects have. Let's talk about something called gravitational potential. Uh, it's important to note that this is not the same thing as gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential is measured in joules per kilogram. And the concept of gravitational potential might be new to you. So the gravitational potential at a location in space is the amount of work required to move that mass from infinity to the location of interest. So imagine we have a big, some big mass that's creating a gravitational field. That's not in this equation, okay? but there's a gravitational field. And we have a smaller mass that we want to move from an infinitely far distance away to a position in space at which we want to calculate the gravitational potential. Now here's the tricky part. Since our mass is going to be attracted to the larger mass that's creating the gravitational field, uh, you might think if we just let go of our mass at infinity, it's going to go all the way through the gravitational field and collide with the mass that's creating the field without our helping. And that's exactly true. But the idea here is we're going to move this mass from infinity uh, along with the field without it speeding up. So we actually have to do work to hold this mass back. So if you can imagine a mass moving from infinity uh, towards another object, a large mass, say a planet, and we're going to restrain it and so that it moves at a constant slow speed. And we're actually going to have to apply force backwards to keep it from accelerating. That's the work that we're talking about here in this equation. So it's a little tricky. So since the force we have to apply is always going to be backwards to the direction that our mass wants to move, uh, the gravitational potential is always going to be a negative number because the work is going to be negative. Note that the gravitational potential will be measured in joules per kilogram. And again, it's important to realize that gravitational potential energy and gravitational potential are different things with different units. This equation allows us to predict the gravitational potential V sub g, at a location that's a distance r from the mass, big M, which is causing the field. Remember that we just said that gravitational potential will be negative. The negative sign in this equation takes care of that force. 
This equation allows us to calculate the work that will be needed to move a mass from one potential to another. If the mass is moved from a lower potential to a higher potential, which is against the direction that it wants to move, then the work will be positive. If Conversely, if the mass is moved from a high potential to a lower potential, which is the way it wants to move, then the work will be negative. To calculate the amount of gravitational potential energy that a mass has when it's at some location in space, we multiply the mass in kilograms by the gravitational potential uh, in joules per kilogram at that point. That's all, folks. Remember, it's not whether you win or lose, but how you place the blame.